Hello there, I'm another Magento Dev. Right, this video is one of them ones where it's a little bit sort of, it's happening in real time. So it's one of them what might even not see the light of day. It might be that shit that you're never gonna wear this. So it's clearly not that shit, if you think about it in sort of a interstellar type of way. Um, it's, it's obviously good if you're watching this. So basically, what have we got here? Well, we've got an issue with the brand new version of Magento 2.4.5. say brand new, it's been out a couple of months now, um, and it seems that if you have got Braintree enabled um, as your payment gateway, you are now unable to place an order manually in the back end as an admin. You get this error. And why am I doing a video on it? Well, I'm, first of all, I thought it might be quite interesting, but second of all, let's how do we fix it, right? So there's a few steps, isn't there? There's a few steps, you get this and your ass falls out and you think, oh, well, how do I fix it? What's going on? Like, because you end up with a, ma this is in developer mode locally, so obviously the report comes in, can't place orders manually, right, replicate it. So you, you get on there, on your local version of your site. Now, basically, I'm not gonna show you the process of creating an order um, in the back end, but basically you click submit order and you get this, it, 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 it goes to this. Now. It, obviously this is a massive page of, of of HTML because right down at the bottom is the is what you're after is the information you're after um, because it gets to a certain point in the page where it can't execute any further and it's right down here so you've got to like sniff it out there right so what we end up with is our error right and this is our real error so this gives us something to search for on the internet to figure out if this is a known issue, if this has happened before, etc., etc. So I searched for it on the internet, um, and what I ended up with was um, if I can get it. There we go. So I'm bringing it back up. Don't use Google. So other search engines are available, including this one. And you end up with so basically, I, I, I took a. I didn't Google the error. Well, I did, and it came up with nothing. Like, it's this is quite a hard error for it to come up with. So, what you've got to do is, if it don't come up, maybe try some other parts of the error, or think about what the process is that you're trying to do in Magento, and Google, sort of, in English, or whatever your native language is, um, what that, actually, do it in English, because you're more likely then to hit this page, right? So, do, do it in English for this one, but, Obviously, if English isn't your first language, then unlucky, and I feel for you. Um, it's barely man, so just you know. In this instance, I, I I hit the jackpot. So, right, admin can't create order or reorder with Braintree, right? And that came up just from me saying can't create order two point four point five, which is quite good. And then we end up with the uh, the old Adobe Experience League, which is um, brilliant, and. There we go. That's basically it, isn't it? That's our that's our report. So I'm loving this. This is like this is better than a Stack Overflow, um, with a few different comments. So so basically, what it's saying is, yep, yeah, we're we're aware of it. Last updated on November the eighth, which is today, right? So I'm I'm proper like this is why I'm doing the video. Like it's a today. It, this is an error that's happening now in all of your stores. Um, so. Right, how do we fix it? Well, we get this patch here. This is this is how we how we fix it. So it says here that obviously we've got a few instructions here which might be helpful. How to apply a patch? Um, again, Adobe Experience League, which is is looking fantastic at the moment. Well done, Adobe. Um, and this is how you patch in our version, the only version, the only version that matters, Magento Open Source. This is how you do it. So how do we do it? Right, well, let's see if it works, first of all. Let's see if we can patch it, and let's see if we get the result of being able to order in our store. So I'm gonna download this patch, first of all. I'm gonna chuck it in here. <coughs> right, and I'm just gonna take this off screen for a sec and just unpack it. Okay. So what you end up with is a is a, pa a dot patch file, and I'm going to show you it in a sec. Um, but some things are best 
left unseen, like my downloads folder, not for any weird reason. Um, we've got the patch folder in here. Um, and what I would do, oh, I'm a clean freak, right? I'd create a folder. I'd create a folder in here, call it patches. We could always delete it. I've deleted it, you know, I've, I've, I think I've had one of these before and deleted it. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna put in this new patch here. We can actually have a look at what it's doing, look, which is quite cool. Um, but essentially, this is this is what we want to be running um, locally. So I obviously I use a deploy system. So that means that I want to not only be running um, running Composer locally and getting it all working locally, I want to be maybe branching off first. So I'm going to do that first just to um, make sure um, that I don't get into any bother with my master branch. So I'd say git check out minus b and then I'd probably say a patch because I'm going to end up with a few of these and I'm sure as I say I've ended up with them before um, and we'll just say patch uh, 245 manual order just to give us something that refers to what the issue might be so I've branched off from master and the reason I've branched off from master is I have got changes for this site waiting on staging also the this is my practice obviously but this website the problem has been reported in master been reported in live on that database so I've got a copy of that database I've hooked it up with my local site so it's the, effectively I'm working off the live site not the staging if that makes sense so now we've got we've got this sitting in our branch here um, which is the patch file which is gonna have to hit the server because that's gonna have to be on the server for it to run um, when I deploy finally but first of all we're gonna get it working locally so this is just about running this command here which it gives you a couple of versions I'm just gonna move this off the screen while I do it to make sure I do it right I'm gonna say patch um, hyphen p1 it says in the first command but it does say try it with p2 if it doesn't work so I don't know what what might happen uh, there and then patch name which in this uh, instance is and I often, just to make sure I get it right, I've got to rename, and then I just copy everything. So I'll select all, copy, just to make sure. Right, but, man's in a subfolder, isn't it? Patches, and then that, right? So I'm gonna basically be chucking this into my composer. Saying it's done it, right? Saying it's patched the file. So what else has actually changed then? So, obviously it's not gonna pick up the change. It's not gonna pick up the change locally, but it's saying it's patched this file, and we could see that it is patched it. Where is it, it's, it's done it, so we'll have a look for something. This guy here, just see what it's done. Should have checked it before, shouldn't I? But essentially, it's saying that it's done it. It's patched the file, which is which is good, right? So now I'm just gonna, because this is all local testing. So this is like stage one, the first thing that we'll do. Um, and I'm just gonna drag this back over. Just maybe refresh it. Right. So it it this error has obviously changed, right? And and what I'm gonna have to do now. Again, all testing is I'm going to run the big four locally. So I'm just going to pause the video while this all runs through. Right, in. <clears throat> I refreshed and we're back. Okay, so the patch seems to have worked because one of the other symptoms of this problem is that you can't add products to this grid either. So um, it looks like that has also been remedied. Um, Yeah, 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 that's working now. So if I want to submit this sort of test order, it should go through now. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, okay. Right, oh, 
I'm not going to be I'm not going to be able to right because obviously I haven't got any details in it through but the last time I clicked on submit order that's when it hit the error so it won't even get in past this stage so I'm pretty certain that that patch has done what it said it was supposed to do um, which I am happy about okay that isn't the main point of this video right so obviously I've just demonstrated there how to apply the patch via command line directly into the vendor folder obviously which is the core folder of Magento and um, and test it and see if the patch works which is good right but we need to go a step further than that because as we know vendor can get cleared out uh, the majority of the time when you're running a deploy system you start with an empty vendor folder so that ain't going to be good enough we need a record of this patch at least for the time being probably until the next release of Magento or what have you this is essentially a hot fix and um, we need a record of that in our composer because composer is the sort of central source of truth for what gets created in the vendor folder when you deploy it and also you know if you have any trouble locally and you want to and you want to rebuild your vendor folder you're going to lose the patch and you're going to lose that functionality again so how do we do that well i'm just the main thing that you need or the first thing that you need is this c wegans composer patches right and you need to install that so if you do a quick search on the internet you'll find a you'll find that repository uh, but essentially I mean looking at this okay it was the while back I put it in here you're gonna do composer require C Wigan's composer patches right right so what what do you do from there right well there's it's sort of let me show you one that I've one that I've done before right so what you've got to do is you've got a um, you've got a, a section here called extra and you're able to apply patches in these in these areas here so there's one that I've done before here for um, in this area sorry what I've done before for something that happened ages and ages ago on MailChimp and I've managed to dig it out so in my ex oh, it's not I'll copy it from here which I'm copying it from the right place I'm just going to show you um, I'm just going to show you the structure of this um, and then I'm going to show you what you need to um, build your build your version for this patch and for other patches um, where there isn't specific instructions on the internet. Right, and so when you get to this point, apologies, obviously I stopped the video then and I've, I've just run something, but I just want to talk it through. Um, right, so so first of all, make sure that you've got C Wigan's custom patches um, in all plugins, but also make sure that you've got it installed. Because sometimes you can have it in here if you like I did and I copied it from a, maybe another repo or something doing something else removed it at some point and it wasn't installed and I was just scratching my head then thinking why wow, the patch didn't actually go through and it was because I didn't have the actual plugin installed so there you go so you've got to, got to install that with composer require see Wigan's composer patches right so that goes through then to set up your patch you have a if you scroll right down to the bottom of your composer uh, file, uh, Composer JSON, you've got an extra section. Now, it's advisable to have enable patching on as true, exit on patch failure as true, and then basically lay out your patch. Now, how do you get this information, right? Well, you get it from an ear. So, have a look at what you're patching, and you can see here that it's PayPal Braintree Core, module Braintree Core. So, that's what we're patching. Then, you put a bit of a description about what you're patching. And then a link to your patch file, right? So my patch file lives lives in that folder there, like we've just established. Now, now run composer install minus v. Now that gives you some output. So what I've just done it, and what it's done there is it's now giving me this um, this output here, and it's basically gone through. It's basically worked, and the way I can see it's worked is if I go into my um, form PHP, I can see it's added the bits that it said it was going to add, right? Which is basically them two lines there, look. That and that. So it's added them. So I'm pretty certain that when I push this now um, to my repository, it's going to run Composer install and it's going to apply my patch to that module. Now there's one more thing I need to do, and it advises you to do it in the docs, is you run Composer update hyphen hyphen lock 
and that just makes sure that there's no discrepancies between your composer JSON and your composer lock file um, with regards to yeah this this patch. Um, yeah, and that's that's about it for today's uh, little video. I just wanted to, to go through that. So yeah, that, that's how that's how you would do it. So first of all, test it on your command line just by running the patch. So patch and then the path to the patch. Um, and then second thing to do is make sure that it sits and lives in your composer JSON for future reference or for push into a repository um, and also, you know, um, just so you've got a record of it when you're working locally as well if you need to clear your vendor folder and, um, and, and rebuild everything. So be aware though, because I have had this in the past and it's a little bit extra for, uh, a little bit of an extra tip is when these things get fixed, by Magento, so maybe the next release, 245, uh, 246 or whatever, it's likely that they fixed in that release. Sometimes Magento kicks off when you're upgrading that you've got that patch still sat there. So at that point, get rid of it. You can just delete it out of your composer and you can delete it out of your file system as well. But until then, just leave it lying around, if that makes sense. Um, and that's it for today. So if you like this type of content, which is sort of like ad hoc, um, then like the video, pop a comment on there and obviously as always subscribe to the channel uh, but I'll leave it there and um, yeah I'll see you in the next one have a good one